Hello and welcome to this special show on the reopening of schools across India. I'm Gargi Rawat. Now, while several states have been considering and holding meetings to figure out when exactly it will be safe to reopen schools, state governments do seem to be wary considering children have not been vaccinated yet and the COVID curve is not flattening. The Maharashtra government had announced that on August 10th that schools can reopen from the 17th, but a day later, a cabinet decision was taken to put the resolution on hold. This is after the task force voiced opposition. Also now, there's a COVID scare in schools after dozens of children were found positive in Himachal Pradesh, besides in neighbouring Punjab and Haryana as well. In Delhi, the Deputy Chief Minister discussed plans to reopen with school principals. In Rajasthan, schools for class 9 to 12 and other educational institutes are to reopen from September 1st. And the Karnataka Chief Minister has said that he'll hold meetings to figure out whether or not the schools will reopen just yet. So we're going to go across to our reporters, to Maya Sharma, uh, Saurabh Gupta. We'll also be joined uh, later by Ghazali. But f first to you, Maya, tell us what's happening in Karnataka. Well, of course, the Karnataka Chief Minister did announce it on August 23rd. The higher grades, that is 9th to 12th, would open to offline classes, to physical classes. But now he has also said that there will be further meetings held with experts, with members of the expert committee and also with health department officials, the health ministry, in order to talk about this some more, indicating a possible rethink. As of now, officially, though, it is still August the 23rd, but we need to see what happens. And in order to get a better idea, I actually spoke to Dr. Vishal Rao. He is a member of the expert committee of the COVID task force of the government of Karnataka. And also at HCG, he works at the HCG Cancer Center. So as a member of the task force, I actually spoke to him about the possibility of opening the schools and whether he thought it should happen now and what needed to be done, if so. A lot of question about children and COVID, about the reopening of schools and the safety of that. Joining us, a member of Karnataka's COVID task force, Dr. Vishal Rao. I think Karnataka has looked at October, August 23rd yeah. to be um, the opening for class 9 to 12th onwards. Now, that's the age group of 14 onwards, roughly. Now, if you look at this age group, this is the age group that is most likely going to receive the vaccine soon. Okay. So, in my um, opinion, uh, it is time to look at education to be reinitiated with the new normal. So I think the current three points that that would be of great help for us are masking, mm. uh, ventilation yes. and uh, vaccination of the school staff. Okay. And these three would be important and while we do so, look at small bubble sizes. I mean there is no one single thumb rule formula for this but small bubble sizes in schools would be a good starting point and would minimize the risk. I know we have to optimize education at the same time minimize risk. Yeah. And the only way to mitigate the two is to start with small bubble sizes. And that would be the way forward to slowly but eventually open up education and create a balance uh, in, this, uh, in this ecosystem. So to put you on the spot, do you think schools should open for the higher grades on the 23rd of August or should we wait? I think in the current context, yes it should open. Yeah. and. I think it is time that we focus on education and not on social and entertainment aspects in education and that's where that's what's been my emphasis on. Just the classes, not the... Because education. students, no matter what, are not sitting at home. They are currently socially interacting. They are not the ones, we may say they are not going to college or school, but they are interacting. They are reaching out to other friends, families, they are going out, they are connecting. So I think education would be a more disciplined... Uh, area compared to social and entertainment activities at the current juncture. Thank you so much, Dr. Vishal. Thank, Thank you. you very much for that. Dr. Vishal, a member of Karnataka's COVID task force on the opening of schools in the state. How safe is it? Is it inevitable? What needs to be done? With DM Kumar, Maya Sharma in Bengaluru for NDTV. So we've heard from the task force member. We should soon hear from the government after those meetings with the expert committees. But of course, those most affected, the students, we'll be talking to some students now about what their viewpoint is. First, right on the spot here, we have Yadava Priya. He's going to go into first PUC, which is the equivalent of 11th. So, so far, it's been online classes? Yeah, it's been and online. Offline classes, are you looking forward to Yeah, that? surely. Waiting, eagerly waiting for Eagerly it. waiting. Okay, why, why? What makes it so different for you? It's a new, it's a new, uh, I mean, it's a new step in our life, so eagerly waiting for it. To actually see yeah. classmates also as well? And to eagerly interact with the others. Interacting with other students. And are, you, are you ready to send your child to school? 
Yes, 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 exactly. It's a good thing. Yes. What about you? Even we too, ma'am. We are looking same forward. Too. We are looking forward. Online classes are not the same. No, no. Online classes pretty good. Okay, they are under, uh, they can able to follow it up yes. because uh, now call now a student now uh, new students they can able to understand. That's not you can yeah, yeah. But Young generations can able to follow they it. They can up. do it. But do you think physical classes are better actually? Definitely, can? definitely. We need it. We need it they because need they can in. interact with the teachers because uh, and more here more concentration in on offline classes are uh, better rather better than online classes. Okay, so, so yeah, better to have. Actual, offline, yes, offline she classes. She's also lecturer, so that she knows better than that. <laughs> <laughs> so you know for sure the concentration yeah, yes, levels. Yes, yes. So you're looking forward to getting yes, back yes. then. All the very best. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so best. much. Right. So we're also joined by three other students. We're joined by Arzu Sate, who's going into grade 12. Nandan Bhatt, also of grade 12. And Trisha G, who is also going to second PUC, which is equivalent to grade 12. So let's get what their views are, because they are, of course, the ones most affected. Uh, Arzu, if I can come to you first. You're heading back to offline classes soon. The date, of course, still to be decided. But what do you feel about it? Are you ready to head back to class? Um, well, mentally, I obviously want to go back and hang out with all my friends and be on campus because it's a lot better for my mental health. But when it comes to my safety, I don't feel too safe about going back onto campus. I think it's better if the government waits till we're all vaccinated because it would be a more sustainable vision for us to all go back to school in the long run. Yes, of course, because vaccination colleges are open, but all the students and staff in the colleges are vaccinated before they're allowed back on campuses. Students of school are not able to. Nandan, coming to you now. Are you looking forward to getting back to offline classes or do you think online should go on for some more time? What are your thoughts? Well, it's, uh, I'm in a mixed state right now. The whole issue is a double-edged sword. Uh, while there are uh, legitimate claims on both sides for and against opening schools, uh, for example, uh, the yeah. new Delta Plus variant has been has been a cause of concern for many parents and students. Um, but at the same time, and, and many of the students are not vaccinated. Uh, uh, because grade uh, from grade nine to uh, yeah. grade twelve, the, the age group is fourteen to seventeen years old, and uh, so and on the other side, there is also the argument that um, online classes are not as effective as off offline classes um, because students the concentration levels uh, in offline classes is uh, you know usually much higher, and you, yeah. you get to interact with as the parents said, you get to interact with the uh, teachers, and you can collectively learn with your friends, which is much better than individually learning at home. Um, there's also yeah. there's also issues with mental health with uh, students being locked inside a house, especially students from grade nine to twelve who are at the stage of their life that they, they need social interaction. Um, and as as a result of this, um, uh, across the country, depression symptoms have been going up. So it's it's really a double-edged sword um, that yes. um, that we need to the government need to needs to discuss it further to really come to a proper conclusion and to decide what's best for the students. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely, because really for many of us, what we remember about school and college the most are our classmates, the inter interactions as such. Trisha, coming to you, you've been having online classes for a long time. Are you excited about the thought of actually going back to classes, seeing your classmates and teachers? What, what are your thoughts about this? I'm really very excited to go back to the offline classes because I think uh, the interaction level in online classes is very low as compared to the offline classes and uh, we can't even discuss much and we don't know what to do if we are in online classes right so there are a lot of technical issues net issues and where we don't even get correct concentration and listen to the classes so I think I uh, mainly I prefer to have offline classes because we can like discuss more, interact more with the teacher and even with our friends and learn more and it's actually really very good to go back to offline classes. So you're certainly looking forward to it and if I could also just ask the three of you what you would like to see in your school to give you that sense of security and confidence. Arzu to you first, what do you want to see to make sure you feel safe? Um, I think a lot of protocols need to be put in place in terms of what we do outside of school. Coming to school is a different matter, but um, in terms of masks and safety protocols, 
called like social distancing, especially with very large Indian schools and for the government schools. Yeah. Um, it can be very unsafe, especially because a lot of us are not vaccinated and we won't be for a while. So I definitely like to see more restrictions on how much we can do and how much we can't do. Because as the parents said before, our life outside of school is not very controlled. And um, a lot of students go out yeah. with their friends on the weekends. Yeah. So um, the safety levels are really not that high. Um, but yeah. Yeah. And Nandan, what would make you feel secure? Because most students, of course, school students are not vaccinated. You're all too young. What would make you feel safe to get back to offline classes? Well, I think a school should first precaution, social distancing, uh, make, make wearing masks uh, ma mandatory, yes. uh, san sanitize the class. After each class, the class should be sanitized. Um, and on top of that, I think um, because um, we should really avoid mass gathering. So I think schools should divide um, students to batches yeah. and assign them a certain time to come to the school in order to avoid um, mass gatherings at the school. Um, so these, uh, and uh, um, as the parents said, outside the school, uh, the students personally, they, they also should be responsible as to make sure they also follow the precautions um, and yes. the rules that the government has set out for us. Um, so um, I think if these yes. are followed um, at schools and outside, this would make me feel much safer going back. Much safer. Absolutely. And Trisha? Uh, do you think that you and your classmates will follow the COVID protocols? Will you do what you need to be safe? Yes, of course. I think everyone should wear the mask and sanitize. And mainly, we have to sanitize the classrooms. And we, 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 must, we must not gather much. The mask gathering, all the stuff, you have to stop or avoid it. So I think that's much safer. If you follow all these precautions, I think we can go back to the school with absolutely yes all these safe things. Absolutely. So, so students in Karnataka, some of them looking forward to getting back. Parents also sending them back with caution. But we'll know soon enough whether in fact schools do open in Karnataka on August the 23rd after some high-level meetings with the chief minister and other officials. Gargi, it's back to you after this these voices from Karnataka. All right, thanks so much uh, for that, Maya. And I can imagine, you know, students wanting to go back to school, but also being a bit wary about it. And, you know, and we've had already these cases from Punjab, etc., where cases have spread after uh, schools have reopened. So, sort of, what is being thought of there in Maharashtra and Mumbai, you know, already uh, from the 15th, a lot of the relaxations will begin. But schools is something that there's a lot of thought going into right now, isn't it? Absolutely. You know, there were plans to reopen the schools from the 17th of August, but that's not going to happen. And that was decided by the cabinet. There are three or four concerns broadly. One is, of course, that A, children have not been vaccinated. So they are at a bigger risk now than the vaccinated population. Another important thing is that while there are schools, private schools that have enough space, there are uh, schools that may be able to implement social distancing a lot of schools like this one say which is a municipal school and the kind of numbers they have at these schools they may not have enough space to actually you know ensure that protocols are followed very strictly the other thing is of course many of the municipal schools or government schools or even private schools to some extent are vaccination centers and the government wants to continue vaccinations as much as possible set up perhaps even more centers as vaccine supplies improve. So keeping all of that in mind and keeping the threat from the Delta Plus variant in Maharashtra, the government for now has decided that while they're going to allow relaxations in terms of local trains, in terms of you know shops being open till 10 o'clock in the night, in fact, in Mumbai by now shops would have been shut. But you see most of the shops are open because they've been given that relaxation of staying open till 10 o'clock. Local trains are also being allowed from the 15th of August, but schools will have to remain closed because there is that worry that children A will be affected in the third wave and B, vaccinations is still a major challenge. And one hopes that by November, post Diwali, the government says things will be much better. They would have vaccinated a larger number of the population. They're hoping that a vaccine for children will also arrive in some time. So then they will say, they will talk about, they'll think about reopening schools.
All right. So, so and sort of when when we talk about reopening schools, you know, we have to also look at urban versus rural because we while you know urban students students in Mumbai are managing online classes and Zoom. NDTV has been reporting on you know the kind of troubles that and challenges that rural students are facing and senior students are facing their own set of problems. But a lot of the younger students are just lapsing into illiteracy. And that's a huge worry. You know, in fact, this gap between the rural and the urban is one of the major reasons why the government was actually considering opening schools from the 17th of August. In fact, uh, activists had written to the chief ministers of Karnataka, of Maharashtra and of Delhi to consider reopening schools. And the government had considered that. In fact, they'd gone ahead and planned to reopen, but those plans have been put on hold. And why? Because the task force, the COVID task force, which is an expert panel of doctors that have been sort of you know, advising the government on the COVID strategy have made it very clear that opening schools at this point would be a huge risk with health. So the government feels that yes, it is time, they have, to, they have to keep the school shut. But in the rural areas, we've reported how children are dropping out. One generation is actually perhaps slipping into illiteracy. And that's something that's worrying. In most places, there is no network. Or even if there is children, are you know perhaps finding it difficult to continue online classes access to mobile phones access to internet and costs associated with online classes for example internet prices all of that is a worry for rural students and that is one reason why the government was actually considering reopening schools the decision that has been put on hold but we had students from urban areas who also say that going back to school is important Let's just hear what students in urban areas from Mumbai had to say. Even though our teachers are ensuring to cover up our portions for academics and non-academics during our online classes, I miss having to go to physical school every day. I miss meeting my teachers and my friends. Let's all hope that physical school can start soon so that we all can meet, meet each other and have fun. Well, you know, I mean, that's where it stands. I mean, students have to go back to school. They want to go back to school. There's a huge cost that the country is paying for keeping students out of school like this. But at the end of the day, the government says the health is primary concern. And for that reason, they will hold the decision to reopen schools from August 17th. And that right. will be considered most likely post Diwali. Back to you. All right, Saurabh, thanks so much for joining us uh, with that. And let's focus now on Punjab, where uh, schools have opened in Punjab and Haryana and Himachal uh, Pradesh. In fact, uh, schools have opened and now cases are being reported, uh, uh, COVID uh, uh, case breakouts are being reported among students. Let's go across to Ghazali uh, for more on this. In Ghazali, now the tests as well are being increased. They're going to be conducting 10,000 uh, tests daily. Just take us through all these developments because this is something being watched by other states also very closely. Punjab was one of the first to open schools. See, the major concern for both Punjab and Himachal was the highest R factor. The vaccine, uh, sorry, the virus reproductivity thing, uh, Himachal and Punjab top that list in the country. And now Himachal has decided to close down all the schools till 22nd of August. But Punjab goes ahead with the schooling, uh, with opening, reopening the school or continuing it. But they say that we are focusing on the vaccination. Just a couple of days ago, the Chief Secretary of Punjab had ordered that the testing will be ramped up. They, increase, they will uh, try to touch the figures of 10,000 sampling per day. But uh, there is another concern, which is about the vaccination of the teaching and non-teaching staff. Uh, and that is also a concern for the parents as well as for the state government because uh, uh, the health minister we spoke to recently said that we can't uh, keep the students in doldrums on when schools will reopen because we never know that for how long this pandemic will have an effect in the society. So that is why we had to uh, reopen the schools. But uh, the minister was quoted saying that it is very tough to monitor school-going kids in, in classes, in junior classes, because they certainly violate the COVID norms and it is not easy to monitor each and every student in the school during recess hours or sports classes hours or, or any other uh, lay, layer period. So this is a bigger challenge for the government. As of now, they are certainly focusing on ramping up the uh, uh, the testing as well as vaccination across the state. All right. Uh, thanks so much, Ghazali, for joining us with all those details. So that's the situation in Punjab, uh, Haryana and Himachal Pradesh.